Hello, my name is Jason, Western Regional Sales Manager at Spring ML. Joining me today is Polash Barbwaj, VP of Industry. The definition of virtual reality comes naturally from the definitions for both virtual and reality. The definition for virtual is near and reality is what we experience as human beings. So the term virtual reality basically means near reality. This could of course mean anything, but it usually refers to a specific type of reality emulation. Answering what is virtual reality in technical terms is straightforward. Virtual reality is the term used to describe a three-dimensional computer-generated environment which can be explored and interacted with by a person. That person becomes part of this virtual world or is immersed within the environment and whilst there is able to manipulate objects or perform a series of actions. Now, I'm excited to introduce my colleague, Palash Bardwaj, VP of Industries at SpringML. Palash, how are you doing today? Good. Thanks, Jason. Great. Thank you very much for asking. So touching base on what we already talked about, how do you see the implementations and its growth across industries? Um, by implementing an immersive virtual reality environment, some of the AI applications, there are possibility to test those products or those retail ideas that have not been brought up to the market, putting them on a virtual shelf to study consumer reactions and behaviors to real-time merchandising. By integrating an eye tracker, for example, with the head-mounted display, it could, it may be possible to monitor the consumer gaze and behavior in regard to the certain to certain products. While these are making progress significantly, every change takes baby success, baby steps to succeed. If you look at some of the studies worldwide revenue from virtual rea virtual and augmented reality market size is projected to reach around 26860 million by 2027 and seven from you know past 2020 it was at 7720 approximately at a CAGR of 19% during 2021 20, and 2027 20, uh, so if you look at uh, to date, the world's top technology firms who have invested in VR, which includes Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, or Meta, Samsung, IBM, they're all uh, investing. And if you specifically look at the retail side of it, some of the biggest supermarket chains have built their own technology labs to explore this, how VR and other new technologies will bring benefits to their business. Um, examples could be like Lowe's Innovation Lab, uh, Walmart Store Number Eight. So these are they are already investing there. Now, what are the advantages that you're looking um, of virtual reality? Example: If you, if you look at from in-store engagement perspective, it will help consume customers navigate a store and find products, gain store incentives or rewards as they move. Um, on the second side of the product customization side of it, uh, it will allow the brands to visualize the idea before they invest in execution. And the third piece is experimental campaigns, immersive where the customers uh, immersing uh, customers through planning and storytelling and branded experience bring that campaigns out. Now, if we explore some ex applications in, in subsections where VR is currently used or studied with an aim of helping business leaders determine their organizations would benefit from their technology, there are I would categorize into three different big sections. One would be fitting and makeup, makeup previews, for example, home improvement. And the third piece would be merchandising. So these are the three areas, three categories that we would look at. Definitely sound like areas for vast amounts of expansion. Uh, can you help us understand a little bit more about how it would fit into these with the fitting rooms and the home improvement and merchandising? Absolutely, sure. So, you know, I. As I was, I was categorizing into three, right? So if you look at the VR for fitting room and makeup previews, there are a lot of 
organizations or the companies, they have developed virtual mirrors or fitting rooms where they can simulate the process of trying clothes in retail store. The technology, will act, in fact, allows the retail store to present options for the shoppers in less time. So these are the factors that you, you, you know, people would look at. While we are discussing about virtual mirrors, you know, for clothing, we can highlight, you know, some, some you know, similar applications for cosmetic previews, for example, or, you know, shoes. So a mobile application, if developed, can allow customers to virtually try on cosmetics before they can decide and purchase them. So the technology for that uses face tracking or facial motion capture the computer vision technology that allows to collect data from the images and videos by mapping multiple data points of the facial landmarks in real time to determine the head pose, for example, facial expressions and different skin tones on lip and face and their facial contours. The application, so the application should have the face recognition algorithm and will be trained to determine age, race, gender, facial hair, and other attributes that they're looking at. So the application first scans the user's face, prompts the user to choose the product and the shades to preview their face. Now, the catalog includes the products that is, for, for example, if you're looking for a shade of lipstick or eyeshadow or eyeliner or a foundation, the application also offers the complete makeup look and the user can try, right? So if a customer likes the shade, how it looks, they can purchase the product directly from the application itself. So it becomes user-friendly, easier to purchase, and it'll give a complete uh, solution for a user before they purchase out, see how they look. Um, the shopper can also opt to scan the actual product, display it on the screen, and virtually instead using that product tester, you know, when, when the image appears on the screen, the shopper can also test uh, their available shades. So the algorithm is also trained on the customer's real-time data to deliver relevant recommendations. For example, if the customer has been exploring let's say, smoky eye in makeup, right? And the application will display more products that can create smoky eye look. This kind of application can improve that customer experience and engagement and loyalty programs that they're running behind it, right? So this is a very, Absolutely. very unique way to drive it, right? I mean, it's isn't that amazing? So very That's similar. That's incredible. Yeah. So very similarly, um, uh, you know, if... You look at the developed mobile application that allows shopper to virtually fit shoes, for example, based on 3D biometric feet. Um, after scanning the shopper's feet for food, for example, the application can recommend the shoe size. It can model the best fit for the shoe customer using the pictures, the photographs of the customer's foot taken from several angles. The application's biometric capabilities will create 3G, 3D foot uh, image of the foot. Once those images are saved in the application, its algorithms will engage, ar arrange the pictures to send notification once the biometric is ready. So for example, the measurement each time the user logs in for the shoe, uh, shoes to shop the shoe, they will be able, the, the, the app will have a deep learning algorithm in place of the shopper's foot image and 3D for the shoe. So the recommendation engines work. The you know you see how how the whole spectrum of the purchase habit, purchase user perspective, what could be recommended, what are the availability, everything comes in play, right? Um, Absolutely. So, so this is from that sir. So. Coming to the second point that Jason, uh, you were mentioning about the home improvement, right? As you mentioned, so very interestingly, um, it's it's a you know VR is a compelling brand 
for potential, you know, impressive marketing and shopping experience, right? So we at Spring ML um, have developed a large, for a large renowned home improvement company to visualize objects before they purchase, a solution that enhances the customer experience that enables visualize their option and solution allows customers to make informed decisions. The reimagined experience helps, you know, in their increase of sales. Exactly what you said. Can I see the color of my wall? Or can I see my floor, what I'm trying to purchase? Can I uh, see how to look within the same infrastructure that is available? So those are, you know, things that you can make a decision, an informed decision, before you purchase any product. So um, advantage for the the retailers is there is less chances of uh, returns, better customer experience. There are a lot of different areas that, that gets targeted here, right? Um, as you know, earlier I was mentioning, right? Um, if you use a virtual reality application to track your eye and head movement promptly, um, such as purchase transaction, once logged in, you can navigate to the home. Like so you're looking at, you know, a home improvement as we talked about. We can actually the sensors can identify and you know gaze on a fixed item that you want. You know, the product is on a display. You know. Uh, their information, its pricing, videos, you know, um, the inspiration, the manufacturing, you know, it, it will prompt all, all the information that is required. And the eye tracking technology uh, the informs the device exactly the, in, you know, individual gaze focus according, you know, um, and the data analyzed to determine the person's presence, focus, drowsiness, consciousness, mental states of intent. So you can, in fact, find out what is that you want to purchase. Of course, you know, um, given um, the security or, or the um, information that is only required to obtain, not the personal side of the information, right? So uh, all, all the application that is getting, getting developed, you know, complies with, with, with uh, all the compliance regulations that comes in play. In any AI augmented platform, for example, like parents wants to find baby proofing product, online cataloging and all the stuff. So what they would look at is they would like child safety and to and the hazards around to provide product recommendation, right? So if you consider child age, the context of recommendation and the virtual tested, you know, um, product by the parents through the mobile application. The application can have the ability to identify the hazards. Like if you have a home, it'll tell you, um, you know, the electrical outlets, for example, stove tops, uh, door handles, and the application's computer vision will highlight those within the VR and show the proofing. Well this is a safe area this is not a safe area for for any you know product that you're purchasing so you know very very big area to explore and go further right um again this is you know one section that we talked um, and you know a lot of people are interested in that now coming to the last section that we talked about was on the merchandising side right um a virtual tool can allow the retail and the brand to simulate the new retail concept before creating anything in the physical world. Um, if you, if you know, it can provide retailers the cost-effective ways to test ideas such as product display, packaging, the store layouts, the signage on the shelf, uh, the translate inside what is there inside the store. The software and the machine learning algorithms can be trained to re recognize the shopper's behavior and patterns to collect data and gaze the store floors, right? So they can change. So let's say, for example, um, I get into the store while coming 
out if uh, the store can identify that most of the customers while coming out are trying to buy mouth fresheners, uh, mints, or, or chocolates. Um, they generally keep it at the aisle at the exit. So people know that behavior, right? And that behavior could attribute to their product what to see, what to provide where, and how the attribute and the pricing and the checkout process will work, right? Now, if you know it's coming to an area, I mean, you probably have heard for a lot of merchandising, you know, uh, retailers where they are trying to get into an area where it's going to be self, you know, walk in and walk out process of checkout, right? So you go in, you know which aisle, what you have, you know, pick up, you're coming out, and the store really knows that you purchase ABC. And it's already charged based on, you know, the uh, the you know entry that you've made, whether it's, it's a digital wallet or your digital presence that you have, right? So it's a, it's an amazing amazing experience that we are getting into. Um, uh, some people may think it's a scary thing. Uh, some people may think, well, it's an innovation. Uh, I think only time will tell. Um, but uh, from a technology standpoint, it's an area where people uh, will have to learn, let the machines also learn and help, uh, you know, um, experience who wants to experience those those. Behaviors. That's awesome, Palas. So we have some takeaways for business leaders that not only is the future of VR going to be able to help with customer engagement, but also going to be able to help with suggestive selling, improving the process on both sides and kind of helping everybody's lives out. That's awesome. That's it's really uh, it's really impressive that we're part of Spring ML and they're at the forefront of this kind of bringing new opportunities out there in the retail market. So thank you so much for going over this with us today, Palash. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Palash.